Welcome to Mazda Ireland's all new Mazda 3. There are four spec versions available. This one happens to be a 2 litre Sky Active version. It's a 6 speed manual petrol and it's 200 euro to tax. Prices start at 26,000 euro and go all the way up to 30,000 euro. I particularly like the front end of what they've done with the Mazda. There's a whole new redesign and while it looks similar to its older versions, there's a lot more sharper lines you can see here on the nose and the lights. And at the rear as well, they've done a huge big bit of redesign, which I really like. From the exterior, it does give a premium look, but from the interior, it follows through with this design. There's a nice piano black interior. Mazda's redesign in the last couple of years has come on in leaps and bounds. It's gone from a fairly footy duddy image to an absolute killer on the streets. The cabin is most definitely oriented towards the driver. Once you get the seating position correct, it's absolutely wonderful to drive. It took me a while to get the driving position on point, but once I did, using the right reach adjust, you kind of slide in underneath the, the uh, dashboard, which is a really odd thing to say. But then it's really cozy, really close up to the uh, steering wheel, and you've got great visibility out front, but where you don't have good visibility, unfortunately, is out the rear. The rear three quarters are quite blind and you will need the re reversing camera, which by the way is excellent quality. Get in a 2 litre petrol and then you can get in a 1.8 litre diesel and a 2 litre diesel. While the 2 litre petrol feels a little underpowered, I'm hoping that the Sky Active X technology that is due soon will remedy this. So looking inside the cabin, I just have to show you this premium feel technology. It's absolutely gorgeous. See, on the dash, you've got this kind of lovely squashy leather, um, which hopefully soon will be replaced by animal friendly uh, components. I see a lot of manufacturers doing that at the moment, which is a really good thing. You've got this gorgeous steering wheel. I mean, I, I, it's such a delight to hold and touch. Um, the qualities as well. The qualities I see lasting uh, quite a while. Um, so here you've got the uh, infotainment and source buttons. Um, it, they, they work fine. They, they, they're laid out quite simply, but I think they could have been better positioned or better used. I don't really need. This is for the cruise control, obviously. Now, what happens when you're using cruise control is that the lane assist automatically activates, which is quite unfortunate because normally you can turn it off down here. But um, when you put on cruise control, lane assist activates. And as we all know, roads may have white lines painted on them, but unfortunately, they're not up to their UX design. Um, you've got the radio source here as well as down here. So you can see already after uh, a bit of use, this piano black trim is starting to and I've been trying to take care of this, it's already starting to uh, attract dirt and dust um, a little bit, and I've actually no, been nowhere near the beach, but it looks like I have. Um, so, yeah, this is the audio um, just here, and I've tended to use this over the steering wheel, and I find it much simpler, much easier. This goes in like a ratchet, one, two, three, whereas uh, for some reason, when you're using it on the steering wheel, it tends to blow up or blow down. It, it's it's quite large increments. Uh, this is also a nice touch as well when you're using the sat nav or any of the menus uh, within this 15 inch 
dash that they've placed here. This is also the same size on every single Mazda 3 out there. There are no changes in differences or other selections that you can option. You have, they still are sticking to CD as well as USB though. You have a USB placement here and you also have one in the ample uh, armrest here as well as a 12 volt charger. But back to this, this is fantastic, good selection, nice click through and all right, one of the best stop start systems out there. Now this is a manual, okay? And when I'm sitting at traffic lights and I activate this auto stop start, auto hold, uh, it's fantastic. I just sit there, it's really easy to, um, you know, it doesn't roll back, doesn't roll forward. And then it just, when I need to uh, move off then when the traffic lights change, away it goes. There's no pause, there's no, oh, do you, what did you want me to do again? Um, there's none of that messing going on whatsoever. It's another great system I also have to mention is the Bose speaker system throughout the cabin. Uh, this comes on the GT um, Sportline trim. And my God, it's absolutely 100% worth specking. Tick that box, get that job done because you will really, really hear the sound difference. Sound quality is superb. If you're streaming through Bluetooth audio, if you're not using the USB cable, um, you've also then got a choice of DAB radio. It's brilliant, quality, quality sound. So this is the driver's seat as I sit in it myself. Um, let's say I'm an average size five foot eight adult. And yeah, I, I don't know. No, so I'm quite comfortable in the back here. Um, there's, there's, there's a nice amount of space, but I don't know if I could uh, stick it for too long a journey. And if, say, if this was loaded with four adults and their luggage as well, that little, that two liter engine would just struggle to overtake at, at the most important times, uh, to be honest. But again, premium feel. I absolutely adore this cabin. I love dark colors. I love the enclosed and coziness of the whole thing. It's it's fantastic. Really, really suits me down to the ground. Um, this is a bit of me. So while I'm back here, I'm just gonna show you this. It's a bit of a blind spot. So when you're driving along, uh, when you're driving along, this is very difficult to see out of, to be honest. What's going on behind you is hard to keep track of um, and you really have to have your wits about you. You have to have the mirrors set just right. You really need to know who's behind you and what they're at and keep, keep track of it all because um, it doesn't look like they're taking up that much space on the, the, the outside but those seat pillars are huge. They're huge. So to the seats you have the usual isofix settings only two available um you've got this rear seat you also have an armrest for your passengers to make the most out of it again another premium touch everything everything every single thing back here is premium quality feel i love it uh, just to show you these uh, rear three-quarter panels they do take up quite a lot of space and um uh, create a bit of a blind spot so to check out the boot space You've got a 60-40 split, a high lip load, and the seats don't fold flat, uh, but they're reasonably easy to flip down. The button here, you have to kind of push it down a little bit, and this is another issue actually as well. So you can take that down, but with the seat back in the driver's position, the seat doesn't actually fold. Now you can move the driver seat up, it'll then sit down, um, but it's a shame that you have to you have to do that. Uh, otherwise, you have a reasonable amount of boot space back here. Seats up, you've got three around 350 litres. The seats down, you've got something like 1300 litres of space to utilise. Um, pull this up. You. That's the Bose stereo there, taking up the space 
where a spare wheel would usually go. But what a stereo. I'd actually be pretty happy for 90% of the time having a stereo and maybe that 10% having to go to the garage to get the, the wheel changed. Another oddity is instead of a, an auto boot close, you've got this lock. So say if you walk up to the car and you don't open the car, you just open the boot and you've got the keyless entry. Um, you press this button to lock the car and then you close the boot and then that's it. Um, I'm not too sure how useful that is to many people. Uh, wouldn't be to myself, I definitely prefer um, an auto boot close. It took me a little bit of time to organise the seating position just right, but once I did, I got the most out of this entire experience. Everything just seems to be angled towards the driver. So this is what I was talking about, the seat adjust. Um, it's down here on your right hand side of the driver's door. It's electrically adjustable in this GT spec. And basically, if the door is closed, your hand is squashed between the driver's door and the seat a little bit. But you've got like, you can raise it up, there's down, raise it back, and then you've got lumbar support as well. Um, I found it a little bit difficult at first to find that perfect seating position, but once I did, I found I'm just like sitting like a, as if I was in a Formula One car. I know it sounds funny, but trust me. Take a test drive and see for yourself what I'm talking about. Um, I just want to show you this, this seating position. It took me quite a while to perfect. You've got the seating adjustments on the bottom right hand side of the driver's door. It's a little bit squashy between the driver's door and the uh, actual controls themselves. So you can move forward, you can move backward, you've got uh, up, down, brake reach adjust on the steering wheel and you've also got lumbar support as well. I usually prefer a higher seating position so that I can see the road ahead and avoid potholes in as much time as possible. What I found with this Mazda 3 was, if I lowered it, and I feel like I'm sitting under the dash and I'm not, but I feel like I'm sitting in underneath. Lower the steering wheel a bit, I've got this really pleasant um, seating position. It's very race car like, it's very tight, it's excellent for the turns. Now the engine doesn't reciprocate that, this, this 2 litre petrol engine is perfectly fine. And it's exactly what you would expect in a normal small family hatch. Um, but I absolutely adore the seating position and once you get the seating position right, the acceleration and the gear stick with this gorgeous notchy turn. I believe that Mazda are making what they're calling Sky Active X. They're saying that it's the hot hatch version. I don't know if it's quite GTI territory, but they really need to look into it because my God, this could be a future classic. Well, the suspension is lovely and stiff as well. It's another thing. I very much like as well as this dark cozy interior some people don't like them they find them claustrophobic and in that case I would suggest ordering a sunroof to lighten it up moves along nicely and swiftly no issues there again I love that gear change once I got the seating position right I love the gear change um, stiff suspension on smooth roads, it's like gliding along. But again, I just love this steering position. Once I got it right, I was over the moon. Everything came together. The whole cabin just is driver oriented. Um, and not in the same way as the BMW 3 Series is. As you can see, everything is angled exactly at the driver. The uh, passenger doesn't seem to matter all that much. Um, but yes, very much angled towards the, the driver once you get that seat. If I were to put this into a category with the Ford Focus and the Mercedes A-Class, I think I would absolutely pick this. The EcoBoost engines are quite good. They are economical, a little bit gutless. The A-Class surprised me in that it doesn't drive as well as its bigger B-Class brother. It has a very odd feel to it um, and they, they need to work on that because it's such a winner, such a great little car. Just put this Mazda 3 in with those two, the premium feel that you get with the Mazda and this wonderful 